come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. What did we watch tonight? Tonight because of the... Well, there's a reason we watched uh, the movie we did, but because there's now... Uh, is there a hype train? I've seen it all so. the hype time in my, uh, and I've wanted to bring this movie for a while and it's three hours <laughs> three long. So hours long, yeah. thank you for going on the journey with me. But this is s- the original 1979 Salem's Lot. Mm-hmm. Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. Lot. No Jeru- Jerusalem's Lot. So what happened to the sign? Why did it go from Jerusalem's Lot to Salem's Lot? I've seen the sign in, in many of the advertisements for the new for one. For the new one? Yeah, for yeah. it's like Because I think away. it was like Jerusalem's Lot originally. In Some the story. bad shit happened and they're just like, well, Salem's Lot. Yeah. So they are just Salem's Lot. Okay. Um, okay. I don't remember why they showed it in the book. I did read the novel. Cursed so, by Evil. Yes. Um, this is uh, directed by Toby Hooper. Mm-hmm. From the year. 1979. Okay, gotcha. 1979. And it was a CBS two-part television movie. A television event. Mm-hmm. Yes. The ultimate in terror. It was. Now, I did not see it when it was originally broadcast, but I have read anecdotal accounts that, like, say. the popularity, because, I mean, you got to remember, kids, you don't know how it was back then. There were four right. TV channels. There yep. were three TV three. channels. Three. The yeah. TV would go off at, <laughs> late at night. They would play the national anthem, and there'd be no TV Yeah, on. this is when TV yeah. was done for the yeah. day, back in those times, which mm-hmm. we could... Probably all use it. Yeah, they're go like, yeah. go to bed. Yeah. yeah, go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. We need that as a people, I think. Because yeah. if we're not told to specifically do it, we'll just go nuts. Yep, mm-hmm. and just stay up all night binge, binging. But yep. this was uh, so. What did everybody of, think of this when it happened? Uh, uh, a, a lot of people saw it. Uh, especially, it seems like, I mean, all the accounts are like, you know, kids who saw it. Okay. It would have traumatized it me. It traumatized the shit it. out of like an entire I, generation yeah, of totally children. See that. Yeah. I mean, I was reading some yeah. guy, he was like, this movie was huge when, we, when it came out. Like, you know, the next day in school, that's all anybody was talking oh, about. Yeah. And so the teachers actually started teaching like, you know, stories about vampires. Love it. Cool. You know? Oh, I love Cultural that. impact. Yes. They're like, yeah. And so it was, a, yes. it was a huge uh, uh, event at the at the time and a big deal for these two guys, Toby Hooper and uh, Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Um, Salem's Lot was the second Stephen King novel ever published after Carrie. Wow. Okay. So Carrie was his first. Yeah. Yep. Then Salem's Lot and then The Shining, The Stand. I can't remember okay. the order, but uh, it was the second book ever, ever, that he ever wrote or ever published. Um, and Toby Hooper. Oh, so that was, it was published in 75 and the okay. movie is 79. So it's only okay. four years after. It's a bestseller. And so here's the TV adaptation. Is there, is this the first Stephen King adaptation? No. Carrie. Carrie. What year was Carrie? I forget. 76. 76. Okay. Yeah. So Carrie has come out and there's this phenomenon, you know, around the the books of Stephen King. Mm-hmm. I think it's growing. It's maybe not there yet because you notice on the title card, it doesn't say Stephen King. No. Lot right. or anything. None of that. And it's like you said, uh, his name is very small on the cover of this book. Yeah. Which is not the, original the deal novel in front of us. nowadays if you go to the Stephen King section no. in the bookstore. Yeah. Stephen King. And um, uh, Toby Hooper had uh, shocked the, the nation with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. in 74. He had done Eaten Alive, mm-hmm. uh, which nobody really saw. No, I, I seen still haven't alive. seen it. I and saw that's it. always been my, on my it, list. What, what, what is Eaten Alive about? A it's, giant alligator, right? Yeah, this yeah. guy okay. keeps a giant alligator at, it's not like a tourist trap, but uh, like a hotel, a southern, it feels like a southern hotel and mm-hmm. feeds his guests to it, basically. Oh, okay. Marilyn Burns is in it. Mm-hmm. Ah. Um, right. And so then it's like, so, so, so Toby Hooper gets the job to do Salem's Lot, you mm-hmm. know, like a movie for TV. Uh, a Warner Brothers production. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, after this, right, it was the fun house. And then it was Fuck Poltergeist. Fuck you, Larry Block. Yeah. <laughs> and then Poltergeist. And then Poltergeist. Yep. 
And uh, then his career went sideways because everybody thought that Steven Spielberg uh, directed Poltergeist. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But like you can see elements, you know, of, you know, because you got like the, the, the guy who did Texas Chainsaw did Poltergeist. Mm-hmm. I don't see it, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I but I think you can see it in there, you know. I see it. It's crazy that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is now a 50 year old movie. Damn. And like this year, and it still it holds up. It, there's nothing feels aged about that movie or well i mean it know. feels aged but it still has its the impact yeah doesn't seem to have been diluted by time you know it's right. still a right. rough yeah. movie it's yeah. it's rougher than things that come out now i think I, that's why it holds its strength. i don't know about you guys i don't rewatch that very often because like it's all up here you know what i'm saying like i wrote my, that movie imprinted on me i don't feel the need to necessarily rewatch it a ton just yeah. because it's all there. Yeah. I saw it in the drive-in, though, yeah. and it was like seeing it for the first time. You yeah. know, because that like, was the 4K, wow. the 4K restoration yeah. we yes, saw, I saw when it, it twice. first came out, mm-hmm. and it looked good. It, yeah. The and way it, the sun shined, even, yep. it looked amazing. Yeah. It looked nice. Mm-hmm. And it plays, kind of seeing it in that, you yeah. know, you could imagine what it was like to see the, and it worked like better that way than mm-hmm. I'd ever seen it before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder, it doesn't give much information on the back of this Blu-ray about who shot this. Because I'm curious if if it was I I don't well, I guess I could look it up on the thing um, if it was some of the crew from the Daniel Texas Pearl Chickens. maybe no it wasn't I don't okay. I don't think I it was Daniel Pearl the, the there were movie. some moments in this where we were wondering if maybe the 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 production designer from Texas Chainsaw right. had been it's either the same production whatever. designer or Toby Hooper Toby Hooper has some uh, proclivities that he yeah. likes in yeah. his just put bird feathers and bird bird shit feathers and bones yeah. everywhere. <laughs> And we'll be good. And we'll horns on the wall. Yep. and Make it look like it smells. <laughs> At some point, someone will open a door suddenly. Yep. And, you know. um, so Salem's Lot <clears throat> has, um, I mean, obviously now we have a remake, a remake that mm-hmm. was shot in like 2021 that is finally Yikes. coming out in 2024. Was it shot in 2021? I think so. Oh I think it was like a COVID thing because I okay. remember the novel tie-ins for this were out years ago. Wow. With the poster wow. on it, you know, the guy's like standing in the mist going Which, up to uh, the Marston house. We all know you don't buy those versions, right? Because then if the movie's terrible, you have a reminder right. of how terrible the movie yes, is. Yes, I do not like new movie version covers nope, of books. I won't buy at it. All. I won't, yeah, but I had to search for a different version of Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't want that oh, fucking yeah, new one. I don't on, want on Jason cover. Clark on this cover. No, Get out of here. The, the cat in yeah. the dirt. Yeah. 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 The yeah. big yeah. giant cat yeah. Face, Although, yeah. And there have been some really cool stylized versions of Stephen King yeah. books that have been series that are like uh, minimal but yeah. very cool. Well, I've, I've never I've seen got an a it version of it that's pretty I've good. I've never seen a uh, version of Salem's Lot that creep like I mean I guess I do have a kind of a you know like a, a personal memory associated with both this movie and this this book uh, because the the cover art of the original book is like an embossed girl's face mm. on black lit from below by mm-hmm. some kind of unearthly blue light and she has a single drop of blood dripping out of her mouth and i remember as a child seeing that in a bookstore Mm -hmm. and it like creeped me out nowhere on there does it actually say it's about vampire right um when i went to the um when i saw the christine car at the horror convention they had a little christine museum set up that you could tour while you were waiting in line and they had every release version of the Christine novel all in like this rack so you could look at all the language nice. translations all the artwork and I was like man to be the person who curated this this sounds like the coolest job ever <laughs> That'd be fun but like, to do. even still there was like 200 versions of Christine it's crazy how many different versions of Stephen King content get churned out both yeah, book right? and movie as well. especially yeah. over the years yeah. like they just re-release right. and re-release different countries going mm-hmm. here different translations yeah. yeah yeah they keep his stuff always in well most of his stuff there are some of his books that you mm-hmm. can't find in mm-hmm. print anymore but uh, I wonder there's a story called Rage which was part of the original Bachman books one, and yeah. that one has been I think he pulled it from mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Circulation. There might be another one. Why is that? Why is there? Yeah, it's about a gonna... school shooting. Oh well, uh, from okay. the point of view, yeah. Uh, oh, but he wrote it in the seventies. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, now I want to read it. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. It's called Rage. All if right. you can find it, I mean, it's like it's evaporated from. But I read yeah. it because I read the Bachman books. Like, um, there's right. a, uh, and we, you know what? And we live in the year 2024. There's a digital version of that. Story. Probably. Oh, there's there a PDF. Somewhere. I'll find it. Guaranteed. Right. Send yep. it to you later tonight. I'm sure. Guaranteed. Um, so 1979, uh, mm. vampires are in vogue. Uh, this is always, what a else we got? well, the, the movie version of Dracula, the Frank Langella, mm. 79, uh, yeah, okay. Werner Herzog's Nosferatu, okay. 79, uh, love at first bite. The one that everybody kind of forgets about, 
uh, George Hamilton, 1979. So, okay. like, this is the year of vampires <laughs> in yes. Hollywood. Okay. Like, I think maybe... I didn't know if uh, I Because when was uh, Blackula also somewhere around... I don't think it was 79. Well, did we watch Dracula AD 1972? Two. Okay. But those are... Yeah, Blackula we watched too, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. because yeah. there's... There's like this progression of from from dark shadows, um, uh, kind of Count Yorga vampire. Seventy two like, was Blackula. Sorry. Oh, it was okay. So maybe Blackula or Count Yorga is the first. They're the, like the first movies to take the vampire and bring them into the modern day. It's like you know everything else. Dracula mm-hmm. eighty nineteen seventy two. I guess kind of right. does it, but um. With a with a bitchin' soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blackula is like a contemporary, yes. like, you know, urban movie with oh, a yeah. vampire yeah. in oh, it. Yeah. Uh Count Yorga the same way. It's like, what if we brought these characters into the modern day? And Salem's Lot, the book, feels like it's it's like the American version of Dracula. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, because you're gonna have your monster hunters. There's a, there's a change from the novel to the movie where i think at the end of the novel there's at least four of them because i think father callahan is one of the vampire hunters okay uh at the end and then he goes off to be like in um i think some of the the dark tower okay books. so he is a continuing character in the i was gonna Stephen say it's King always callahan universe. yeah and um but yeah it's kind of like you know well and he told the story like if uh, you know his wife joked I think like something like what if if Dracula like came to modern day America and uh, said you know well he get he get run over by a, a taxi or something in New York you know sure but, but Stephen King was like but what if he came to like a small town mm. and that I think is the genesis of uh, of Salem's Lot well that makes sense I mean you know if you're gonna uh, uh, like I said in the faculty, uh, you can either do it Independence Day style, or you can go in through the back door. And the small town mm-hmm. would be like the back door for a vampire. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I don't understand what the end of the they end up in Mexico at a certain point in this movie. I'm like, why not? Why don't you just go to New York? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. why, why wouldn't you want to be around people and not right. in the middle of fucking nowhere? But again, we'll that, that is like a prologue. I think a prologue to the book. They are in Mexico, so yeah, the the um the movie kind of uh, adapts that. It's not exactly the same. It, there, I had the feeling from the ep, the prologue and epilogue mm. that CBS was trying to maybe spin it off into like a weekly show. Ah. Right? Yeah. And they're always going to be coming for us. Vampire so, yeah, of the Week. Vampire of the Week. You, gonna, know? you know? Like Kolchak. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that yes. was the other one. Or, sorry, the other, yeah. Yes. Kolchak the Night Stalker also brought a vampire into any, the Any of the Mexico scenes just made me think that this was happening in the same universe as Near Dark. Like those vampires are on a parallel journey on, you know, and through then, the Southwest right. as well. And then I was thinking John Carpenter's vampires. Because oh, I yeah. think that always that <laughs> yeah. takes place in yeah, Mexico the, as yeah, well or around yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So it's all, this is where yep. it all came from. Yep. They went down to Mexico at a certain point and mm-hmm. then all these movies stemmed from there. Thank you, Stephen King. Those Mexican mm-hmm. vampires. There's another like difference between, still dawn. between yep. the... Uh, oh, yeah. All those. <laughs> uh, have oh, yeah. you read Va- this? No, I have not read oh, okay. this one. I'm, I'm in the middle of Pet Cemetery right now, which is very good. Very um, good. Bleak uh, as fuck. Good luck to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, recovering it's, mentally uh, oh, from but that I, I, yeah. yeah, it is bleak. But yeah. it is, I mean, especially if you have a kid, but even yeah. if you don't, it's mm-hmm. just bleak as shit. But it's still very good. Mm-hmm. Very creepy. Um, speaking of changes between the, this movie and the book, um, Kurt. I'm going to call him Kurt just because it's funny to call that thing Kurt. Yeah. Um, but Kurt Barlow is a different type of character in the book. Yes. He is not a Nosferatu ish type no. of creature no. that we get in this movie. No. He's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's a Dracula. Dude. I mean, he shows up, he talks. I remember he yeah. has, you know, more Jerry Dandridge of, than anything else. Yeah. You know, because I remember there's a scene with him and Mike Ryerson, the character, the grave uh. keeper, like in the, you know, where he basically seduces him over to the dark side, yeah. kind of. So he is like, you know, more the debonair, uh, you know, vampire, which they did in the 2004 uh, Salem's Lot. The Rob Lowe Salem's Lot. Yeah, it was done for TNT. That was another two and uh, two night uh, event. And it had Samantha, um, not Morton, I'm forgetting her name. Samantha Mathis, uh, Rob Lowe, James Cromwell, I think was the priest. Andre Lauer was the doctor. Um, so they have done this, this, the, the movie that's coming out is the third version yeah, of this story. Yeah. Um, 
It, it, and is the one that's coming out going to be like a multi-night event thing too? I think or? they made a feature film out of it. So okay. that you have to do like a lot of condensing. I'm assuming that they're going to go after different storylines from the book. Because yeah. obviously, you know, when you're compacting something of this size, uh, you have to get rid of certain. Because the TNT one has certain storylines. Mm-hmm. They focus on them that mm-hmm. aren't in the... Uh, you know, in this one, I, you know, oh. I'm not entirely sure. I agree that this needs to be like a two night, three hour event. I'm not, I maybe it's just because I haven't read the book. So I don't know what context is supposed right. to be here, but, but as far as I feel like this could easily of, be truncated. Right. Whatever the, this version of it. Yeah. Yes. Could be yeah. truncated. What, Who knows? There may be other storylines yeah. within there. They could expand upon, but this one, yes. what if I told you that they prepared a two, the first time I saw this movie, mm-hmm. cause I missed it on TV. Right. The first time I saw this movie, it was two hours long. And I, that it sounds was, correct to me. So what they did was they prepared. This was another thing that they did with uh, 70s TV movies. Mm. They would prepare a theatrical version of it for Europe, right? So there is a cut down version of Salem's Lot. When I saw it on VHS back in the day, it was two hours. It was like 115 minutes. Wow. And I remember an alternate take, and I had to actually look some 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 stuff up about it but when larry crockett the real estate agent is uh being uh, uh, uh threatened threatened by the guy whose wife is right there no um Damn. he says put the gun in your mouth larry and he puts the gun in his, he's biting Ooh. down on the gun and i guess standards and practice uh mm-hmm. you know no. for tv said yep. you can't do that so that's what's in the book. That's what's in the the, the other version I saw. That was but a then tense scene. Mm-hmm. They came out with the you know the full um, miniseries, mm-hmm. and that's the only one that you can find now. Okay. So I don't even know how you would. find I mean, aside from the original VHS, how you'd find mm-hmm. the theatrical um, cut yep. of the movie. We got to talk to those VHS collectors out there. They've got it. Somebody does. Oh yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's out there somewhere. Maybe on, as a bootleg, you can see the two-hour version. Okay, so Donald Sutherland was uh, in the 2004 one. He was Straker. He was Straker, and Rutger Hauer, Rutger Hauer. was cool. Barlow. That's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. Cool. And in the new one, we have Pilu Asbeck mm-hmm. as Straker, and a actor who I don't think we're supposed to know, but we do. Yep. As Barlow. <laughs> um, so I don't know if they're going for a Nosferatu thing, right. you know, or or not. Uh, so why Nosferatu? It's not written that way, right? But I guess it's just a good look. I guess, like, yeah, it's good the, luck. The producer said, you know, it's like, well, if it's supposed to be the epitome of evil, what's he gonna say? Right. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. why not make him this kind of rat uh, character? Right. Yeah. And the actor who Those plays him. Teeth. We have seen before, because it's Reggie Nalder, and if you remember Zoltan, oh, the Hound I do. of Dracula, <laughs> yes, uh-huh. the Renfield character in that movie is the is Barlow. No <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so he's been in multiple vampire adjacent movies, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, Reggie Zoltan Nalder was great. He was in. Uh, he was like an assassin in the Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Uh, that movie, I sw- we gotta Dang. cover it. Yeah. How many, <laughs> Ring how the bell. <laughs> it's six degrees of crystal plumage over here. This movie is always connected to something. And he was in the um, the gory knockoff of. Um, you know, the witch finder general mm-hmm. was the, uh, uh, Vincent Price, uh, mm-hmm. in a movie, the gory knockoff was with Herbert Lom and, uh, I believe Reggie Nolly was in it. It was called Mark of the Devil and they handed I've out the barf bags. I've been meaning to bring that to the free for... show for a long time. <laughs> that famous tongue scene. Yep. Yes, I have one of the barf bags. Yeah. Yep. It's... I want to say Reggie Nolder's in that yeah. one too. Reggie it's Nolder. It's a bit sleazier, that's for sure. Is a creepy looking dude. Just you don't in say. general. I think he suffered a burn. Oh, yeah, he's got a distinct look. Uh, he's look. very cadaverous. Well, that's yeah. what they said. They're like, we want Reggie Nalder. Right. You know, we want his face. We want right. you to be able to see his face, you know, you know as uh, as Barlow. If you are an actor and you get a call for some freakish thing about your body and you always have to do it, like the guy who was the mother in Barbarian because he's like seven feet tall or whatever, right? right? Or um, like, uh, the guy who always who plays the, the monster, the crooked man. He played the... Isn't that the same? Uh, is it yeah, Javier? No, the, Javier, Javier Botet? Bo- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Him, like, yeah, yeah. do you... Do you just eventually be like, this is the role I can fill and like just kind of accept your fate, even though it's like exploiting this weird thing about you? You know, like, I don't think you necessarily have to uh, 
if you have a good um, outlook on it, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. yeah just right. like, Doug hey. Jones right. you know, is another one. Loves it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. As long as you're yeah. getting yeah. the benefit out right. of it, and you're just like, I guess yeah, it's a little bit it. different when it, if it's like your face is scarred up from it. That right. might be a little different. Right. Like you know? what's his name from? Um, he's been in tons of stuff. I'm only thinking of him from the Halloween remake. Who is the principal who corners? Um, oh, Richard Lynch. Richard yeah, Lynch. Yeah, yeah, he's got that look on him. Yeah. It's like you can't cast him as a as he's a always going to be He's always going to be somebody threatening at some point. Well, he was a but right. principal in, in Halloween. But, That's yeah. like but, the most but a threatening thing. principal, like <laughs> yeah. just kind of, you know. Did you do you guys see that um, interview with Richard Kind recently when they were asking him like why he's oh, yeah. in everything? And yeah. he said he was like, I say yes to like ninety five percent of things I get. He was like, it it pays me. I like doing it, yeah. and it leads to more work. Why right. would I say no? And I was like, that's a great attitude I, to have. I think it's called cool. like, what am I going to do on a Tuesday? Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah. I'm just I'm going to yeah. go act. Right. Some people just want to work. Yeah. You know I mean? And that's great. It's just like, I don't care. I get he, to be on a very set. Positive and I get to make a movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice yeah. to hear that. And he's that. like, people see my face. They remember it. They cast me in more things. It yeah. always leads to more work. And I was like, smart man, because I right. could probably think of like six <laughs> things off the top I know him from, you yeah. know? Um. So the story and the movie Salem's Lot is, um, it's like a, is it, is it like, Pre blue velvet, like pulling back the uh, the veil on small town America. Yes, this would be like they back in the at this time. You were probably familiar with Peyton Place, right? Yes, It'd be like the so it's like all the drama behind the picket fence, right? Of uh, is this a picket fence, by the way? I don't know what they. Yeah, it looks like the logo. The logo. Yeah, it's made out of wood. Kind of looks like small town picket fence. I think it's like the wood panels on the crate. Yeah, that. That comes up. It, it, it's wood of some sort. It feels. Didn't like. we just say in our episode recently, nothing good ever comes out of a crate like coming out of a loading <laughs> dock? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Stop trying to open them. If oh, a, if a crate's on a loading dock, just don't touch it. Right. Leave it alone. Yeah, we did have small children locked in a crate and sent down river mm-hmm. in a previous episode. Yep. So yeah, yeah, crates are not good for anybody. Um. All right. So yeah, the movie. Uh, you guys had never seen it before. No, no, no I've, I've seen, seen I, I, bits and pieces. I've seen the famous scenes. You know, I've seen. Oh, yeah, scratching I think at the so. window. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I've okay. always seen that with no context. Right. Yeah. Didn't realize it goes on for like two full minutes in this yeah. movie. Yeah. This movie could. This is where you cut, lose time. You, I feel like it loses its scariness the more they keep cutting back to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like the more you see it, the more you're like this is a kid on wires just being like f- flopped around. Right. It's like, like we got the point. Like yeah. there's a good build up to it, yeah. and it's good when it happens because yeah. it's fucking creepy and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But yeah, again, we're just like ah, we could cut away soon. Right. But you can feel the TV-ness of it all. You know, well, it's, it's, like a, it's a lot a of pace, scenes like that. It's yeah. a pace that I think people were used to in that era. Yeah. But you're saying it doesn't necessarily translate into. I mean, now if you're it was a, If it was to, a feature film, there would have obviously, even if it was a three hour feature film, like there would have been, yeah, there would have been cuts. I was just like, yeah, I get it. it I get TV it. Why media. are we keep cutting back to this? And it was it's not, creepy? not because, just that scene, but I feel like a lot of scenes, I feel like we saw people walk full paths from one building to another, probably. like unedited and stuff like that. That's where you're stacking time where you don't need it. Probably. You know? But the stuff with the, you know, the scratching at the window and everything. Yeah. Again, we got to think back to uh, 1979. People right. are just like, oh, what the fuck's going on? It looks know. good, though. It looks good. It looks really good. Well, they film it. It's yeah. like reverse photography. Yeah, and they he, do. He was the smoke's on, coming out of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going back in yeah. as they move. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it wasn't it wasn't wires because he goes through a window at one right. point. Is he being it, pushed? It's a boom. Oh, like, okay, like yeah. a boom, and they're That's bringing cool. it in. Right, because I think I saw a leg somewhere yeah. in one of the shots. Yeah. Something between. It them. looks but really yeah, good. Yeah, it does. I like those, but there's what I liked about those shots was it incorporated like camera moves, like in reverse, right? So they were like, we know we want the close up. Then we want to pull back, right. but you have to think like, well, how they they did this obviously right. backwards, right? So we you know push in and then go back, for yeah. in order to get that looking this way. That kind of stuff I appreciate. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's about a writer. Uh, in this movie, it's uh, David Soul from Starsky and Hutch. Ah. Uh, plays the writer Ben Mears, who is returning to his hometown after many years away mm-hmm. to write a book about a haunted. House, yes, because what else would Stephen King write about than an author going to do something? <laughs> it's what right. he knows it's best. Right. This knows is best. the first is time the first he wrote one? Okay, about, right. right? Carrie was the other one, yeah. Carrie us. was the other one, it's true. So, yeah, this is the first instance of many, but, but yes, isn't this zero. like when you see this movie, 
or read this story, it's like there is a template here for like Stephen King's career. Oh yeah. yeah. There oh, was yeah. this, I was getting ahead of myself because there was this spot where like a van pulled out of like a parking lot rec- recklessly. And I was like, Oh, is that the van that hit him that he puts in every book? Oh, uh, but that hadn't happened yet. That hadn't happened yet. So I was like getting ahead of myself with my Stephen King lore. Yeah. 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 He always puts some drunk, like village idiot driving a minivan in like all of his books. Cause that's who hit him when he was walking. Well, he's really? trying yeah. to, you know, like he does this because, um, I mean, it feels like, I don't know, it, uh, you know, there's there's so many of them where there's a small town, you know, you think it's storm of the century. Actually, that's right. needful things. Is yes. the one, you know, it's a, it's about like another monster opening yeah. an antique store in a small town. That's where, and the all purest, the, that's where the purest evil lives, Colin, in mm-hmm. small towns. In small where towns. You could Is that get, what he's you saying? You can get away with it. You yes, can, where it's not gonna, the whole world won't know about it. Mm-hmm. Just these people, and you can get away with the evil. Which it's like the opposite of the thing we talk about with like, uh, like superhero movies now, right? They're all about like the world is ending. We got to save right. the whole world. There's gonna be a sky portal and all right. this stuff. The Stephen King takes like the opposite approaches. The smallest community where everybody knows each other, yep. everyone's cozy with each other. So one domino falls down, and it has this whole effect. It's yep. it's, it's great. I mean, it does kind of. It seems like you know his towns. It's like everybody knows everybody else's business. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> but there are still secrets like within the town that are always threatening Ancient to bubble. Lore. There's always lore. <laughs> there's lore. There's mm-hmm. always the secrets of the of the of the of the people. There's always an affair going on or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. always an here. affair. And we'll get to it. But nothing uh, else to do in a small town. When she got slapped around, I was like, ding, 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 point for Stephen King because <laughs> we had talked about on Girl That's Scary. They talked about who slaps around women more, Giallo or Stephen King. <laughs> they have a point. <laughs> it's every time now I notice it, but we watched a Giallo within the past year that they also slapped a woman around. Yep. So like they're, as far as the freak shows keep his score right now, they're neck and neck. So <laughs> yeah. Is Stephen King doing it like when, when he does those, you know, because he'll put, you know, racist characters, mm-hmm. uh, abusive yeah. characters. Mm-hmm. It's like that's it, that's part it's of like, that's like it's like a shorthand like, for evil at a certain yeah. point. Yeah, it's the, just that's small feels town excessive evil sometimes. Yeah. Not this movie. This movie, I think it's the perfect amount. Yeah, but like, um, just when I tried to read it, the like straight up like hate crimes and homophobia, and like the first chapter is a lot yeah. to dive into right off the bat. Yeah. But this movie, I think. Uses it the appropriate Just amount. Just the right yeah. amount of misogyny. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's a strong it's, spice, you know? <laughs> it's trying to go with, like, the, the evil that landed from space has yeah. corrupted all yeah. these, you know, right. people. Which I think also, in, in those cases, when they do that, they run the danger of saying, well, it's not really their fault. Right. They're but corrupted by right. this right. influence. That true. Like, they wouldn't do it unless this right. outside force was making them do it. It's just like, no, all right. But not in this one. No. Nope. In this one, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, no, I- are they like, uh, you know, he's going for like, okay, this is a cross section of the average American populace mm. of a small town. So he fills in all the mm-hmm. the colors of that, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, it's always, I, I do appreciate that Stephen King towns are always like a blue collar town too. I like that about his, yeah. his novels. You so. know, cause that's, mm-hmm. now that I'm thinking about that, it's like the other person that I remember hearing a lot of, uh, um, not not criticism, but they, they would talk about mm-hmm. his work that way with Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. right? Would do the same thing with like suburbia. So his parents yeah. getting like divorced in suburbia. A, yeah. With him. yeah, he was always, always the suburbia guy, yeah. uh-huh. and Stephen King was the small town guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so <laughs> they're always getting divorced because they're getting slapped around. So exactly. Much. Like yes. Stephen King shows the reason why <laughs> Stephen King shows the reason why Spielberg's parents are getting divorced. Right. Yeah. yeah. Spielberg was always yeah. absentee parents uh, in, yeah. in yep. a Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. thing. Um. So there's almost like, you know, this is like a, it, it's a story, you know, to fill, I guess, the two nights or, you know, the book has a yeah. uh, multi-act structure, but mm-hmm. um, there's, there's like two focuses, right? Like the first half of this seems to revolve around the Marston house, right? Before yeah. we even get to vampires and all that, yeah. there is, uh, they're laying in the history of Salem's Lot. You know, mm-hmm. so we, we get that through like a pageant. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that there was a fire in the past that destroyed the town. I like that as a kind of a foreshadowing thing. They laid it in and then could could uh, reference that again. Right, because you almost had your um, your perfect horror movie ending, which is burn the house down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, they do. Yeah. And, and then, it, then it spreads to the town and, yes. and, and purifies, purifies the it. town mm-hmm. just like it did in the past. Yep. Uh, so what what is the Marston house? Why And why is it the focus of... Of the movie. 
evil things have happened there. It is kind of like, I don't want to say it's like a Boo Radley house, because that implies there's still like a, a misunderstood misfit living there. But like, right. it is like the lore house in town of like bad shit. What do they say? Like its walls have like evil, have trapped evil's essence yeah, or something why does, like that. Yeah, why does he think that the, uh, from his perspective, because this is about uh, a writer who comes back to the town. So why did he uh, think it was uh, haunted or evil to begin with? Uh, there was always stories about the house. So the house, yeah. like whoever built the house, uh, killed themselves oh, right. and their wife. Right. Killed the wife and the daughter or housekeeper or something like that. And, and was, then somebody yeah. else moved in and this was Hubie Marston. Right. Yeah. And possibly, I think from the book, if I remember correctly, he and his sister were, uh, you know, man or sister and wife. wife. Yeah. Sister yeah. Wife. This is the old sister wife question. Right, this is right, what right. he says. His sister and wife. Yeah. You know, died. And we, Sean like spun out and I'm glad you called that out because I was like I thought I heard that wrong too and was like we heard, yeah, sister, sister wife. wife and I'm just like maybe because people speak weirdly and they're just right. like sister wife yeah. like and and maybe there was a you know a mysterious comma in there but no probably sister wife so he's layering in it's like his references right or he's he's drawing from Shirley Jackson's The Haunting the house yeah. is just evil to its core yeah. in its plaster and in, yeah. in, the, in its bones <laughs> right. which I feel like is an interesting kind of point of view for a Stephen King thing because I feel like his problem is he over explains how things are bad or why things are bad sometimes. Mm. And I think I've heard that John Carpenter described as the opposite. Whereas John Carpenter, a lot of his movies are things are just born bad. So I like yep. that this movie's kind of taking more of the approach of like, this is the, the house was born bad. You know? <laughs> it's, like, it's bad. Yeah. It's like, do you believe in the inherent evilness of a house? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this house and the production design in this movie is definitely going with it because this is a creepy looking house. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it's like half Psycho House, half Amityville House. Right. Just up on a, on, up on a hill and, uh, very creepy. No, they, no house the, on a hill overlooking a city has never ever good. been good, right? No, yeah, exactly. Good. The old house on the hill. But yep. I mean, they always not look haunted. Creepy. But yeah, I think Psycho is obviously an influence in the design. That was uh, a facade they just built on a hill, yeah. Okay, you know? That they could burn down later. I don't think. I don't know if there was a house behind it or if that was oh, really? like, it's just know, that. Okay. Just a facade. Right. Um, but the the house has like so. Here's the thing that I'm afraid that the remake is going to do. <laughs> I think the remake is going to show you Ben Mears' uh, encounter, ghostly encounter, because okay. that's why he he like he yeah he, you know, he'd heard all the stories about the house, but he went in there when he was a kid, and he describes this so you can almost like see it right. Mm. And he goes in and he sees Hubie Marston hanging. You know, right. his flesh green, his hands livid, yeah. you know, his tongue all puffed out, I think. Oh, his, yeah, his uh, eyes, eyes swollen shut. shut. Yeah, yeah. And he opens his eyes and looks at little Ben Mears, and Ben runs out screaming and is like always. They're definitely going to show it. Fascinating. They're going to show That's it. That's the cold open of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. But is it better to, the way that this movie does it with that? No, like, describe it later. <laughs> that was leave great because I see it in my mind. Yeah. yeah. And we don't need to see the flashback, you know. No, I don't we, think. Like, there's a lot of in this movie. There's a lot of like just all right, uh, a slow push in on some guy telling a story, and it, uh, effective as far as I'm concerned. And sometimes that's all you need. Like, I don't need to see all of this stuff. Did you ever see a movie? This is a sidebar, I guess. Uh, there was a movie called. Was it called Scare Me? I this? did remember. I <laughs> you hated this it. divisive. I hated this movie. But that okay, was a you movie. Two have talked about hated it before. It. I think because it's a movie <laughs> about like two people end up in. Uh, I think there's a third yeah. hander at some point. Yeah. But it's basically two people telling each other stories. And right. So it's like mm-hmm. it's an anthology horror movie where they're just telling the stories. Okay. And but, so you're but, doing but, it in your in your mind. You're so they don't the go there? No. No. It's just them <laughs> don't talking. don't dramatize it. You don't see any cutaways. <laughs> it is, was very much no, like, no. That's what I thought it would be. And no, it's two people talking to each other How for long is two, it? Like is two hours. Okay. And, okay. Yeah, and... Uh, Aya Cash is in it, who's from The Boys. So I was like, oh, I like her. I like the, her on mm. The Boys. I like this. Did not like it. Interesting. Did so maybe like it doesn't it. sustain a feature. But I mean, what I yeah. always think of is like, you know, that scene with uh, Hubie Marston. I re- I remember what that scene looks like, even though it, it it's not in the movie. It, yeah. I remember Jodie Foster trying to save that lamb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. even right. though I never saw it. Oh, yeah. right. I, well, I see her, her arms <laughs> right. around yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. running. Right. Yep. It's like those are those great moments mm-hmm. of, you know. Um, so 
New people have bought the house. Uh, this is a Richard Straker and a Kurt Barlow. They're yes. opening an antique store in the town of Salem's Lot. Straker is the only one that we see. Barlow will arrive <laughs> to, at right. some point to in, come the, soon. in the future. So we're like, okay, he's the vampire, <laughs> right? We get it. You know, you got the Renfield character who's setting up the, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the path for the vampire to arrive. So they do the movie um, follows several storylines from the and characters from the book. Um, but the main first part of the movie focuses on uh, this affair. Mm. Right, yeah. like that forms a large yeah. part, and then once it resolves itself, it goes away. Like yeah, it, yeah. It's the whole first act of the movie is this affair, and I'm like, is there vampires in this? Movie? <laughs> so we're taking uh, emotional there. vampires. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the storyline, but again, like you said, once it gets to a certain point, it just goes away. It's done, mm-hmm. and it's just like, what is it trying to represent? Is it just an incident that happens in this town? Is it trying to show that? bad things are just kind of bubbling underneath the surface, you know, mm-hmm. affecting people. Is it trying to say that? It doesn't feel like it's trying to say that. I feel like that's me putting something into it. That it's just uh, the, the rot it? in a small yeah, town or exactly. something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean, I assume that the reason that they went that way, because I did check the cast list for the new movie mm-hmm. and those characters are not present. Uh-huh. So I think that storyline is being skipped over mm-hmm. maybe okay. to make it different. Mm-hmm. You know? Sure. Sure. Um, I think you make it different. Because Fred Willard, bro, right? Um, but you blow <laughs> Fred Willard's head off. And Fred yeah. Willard is in this. I think that's what you do. <laughs> Fred Willard is not a very young Fred a Willard. A very young Fred Willard is the real estate agent who is having an affair with his boom, uh, boom, 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 Bonnie, boom, yeah. boom, Bonnie. She's got a reputation around town, but she's married to Cully Sawyer, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. George Zun, Zun, Zunda from uh, Basic Instinct. He's okay. the, the partner in uh, right, uh, uh, like uh, John Zunda. Goodman's younger brother. It feels yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think they probably chose it because it's a dramatic. It's yeah. the most dramatic hook, yeah. and you can loop in other characters from the town. Because right. they're they're helping with this plot, yeah. Which is basically he's going to pretend that he's off doing a pickup and delivery, yep. So mm-hmm. he can stake out his house as the mm-hmm. affair's going on, mm-hmm. so he can confront his adulterous wife mm-hmm. and her lover mm-hmm. with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, and this lady, wow, 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 immediately hated her in this moment because <laughs> she tries to tell her husband that Fred Willard broke in to rape her. Right, the first thing oh, during uh, the confrontation, yeah, yeah. the confrontation, because yeah. wow. he busts him with a shotgun, wow. and she's yeah. like, no, he broke in and tried to rape me. It's just yeah. like, holy shit. And she doubles down on it. She he really, said, is yeah. that really what happened? And she said, yes. She said, I, Yes. Oh like, wow! Okay. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. this lady man. Wow! <laughs> no. Wow! This is the true villain in the movie, right she's here. She's caught. Yeah, she's caught, and she's you know like, how do I get out of this? Yep. yep. I, th- I think in the new version, you have a vampire run in during this moment. Yeah, I think you have like. Well, they're not even doing it. They're, no, no, yeah. I know, but like, oh, if okay. you were to incorporate this into the new version, like, you still have the same thing go, but then you have like a vampire attack, so it looks like. The uh, an affair was found. People were shot. Maybe a suicide and something like that. Like this is uh, more people dead. This is what adds to uh, the storyline at this point. You just put the vampire in there as well. To, who ends up making it look like people did it and not a vampire? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just even if nothing else, you add to the body count at a certain point. Well, he does get. He like leaves the uh, uh, Crockett. Uh, Fred Willard leaves the affair scene and is immediately attacked by the vampire who's arrived. True. Because true. his. Uh, he never comes back as a vampire. No. Damn. I know. We never see him as a vampire. It's just assumed, but I guess we know what happened to him. Yeah. yeah he yeah. was attacked by the vampire. Yeah. A hand comes up before we cut to commercials. Right. Like, yeah. As he runs out. <laughs> I like how he compliments him on his shorts. Like, nice shorts. <laughs> <laughs> was that an ad lib? I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, I did find a PDF copy of Rage, and here's the cover. Oh, so it does so, exist. Yeah. yeah, it does oh, exist. So I'll okay. send this to the group right. chat if anybody wants Thank to Thank you. Read yep. It, but, I'll read yep. that. Yep. It was, it was, I, it, before, you know, Columbine and all that stuff, I did read it mm-hmm. and it was a good read. I, yeah. So, oh, but yeah. now he's afraid. It's too real now. Yeah. It's too real. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Way too real now, but I'll read it. Um, so, um, the main, uh, thrust of the movie centers around, uh, David soul, right. Arriving yes. in town. And then he strikes up a relationship with Bonnie Bedelia, uh, from, from, Die, Hard. from Die Hard fame. Uh, and probably a few other things, but I've always liked Bonnie Bedelia. Yeah. Um, 
And so she's but, an artist. She's a teacher. Is she a teacher? What does she do? She is, she's a school teacher. School teacher. Mm-hmm. Having she's, an affair with the no, she's she's dating the plumber. Ned yeah, Tebbets. Ned, yeah, Ned Tebbets, the plumber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I like the way that they loop all these characters in. Like Ned ends up being one of the guys who brings Barlow to Salem's lot, yep. he, you know, and then he, he, we forget about him mm-hmm. and then he pops out of a chest of drawers later on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. Loads out of it. He yeah. really does. Um, I remember my impression of watching this movie. I was younger. I was probably in my teens, right? When I finally got to see it, but I did have the impression back then that Toby Hooper is going for a bunch of shock moments. Yeah. Uh, how did they play? Because I know there's like everyone remembers the kid at the window. Yeah. And it's creepy, window. you know, mm-hmm. and you have nightmares. The scratching about it. Yeah. sound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Terrifying. But he also does things like when Kurt shows up uh, the first time he shows up, it, it is a, it is a jump scare. And I myself was frightened at this moment because it's the first time we see the Nosferatu Kurt uh, in the movie. And uh, who's he attacking at this it, point? Ned Tebbets. Is it in the jail cell? Oh yeah, Ned's, like, yeah. All of a sudden, bah! and you're like, what yeah. the fuck? I, would it have been better if you didn't know it was an Nosferatu creature? Of course it would have been. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that I mean, the, even the poster, which is what I'm. Well, yeah, that gives is it a little iconic, bit, a little know, bit away. And uh, I wonder what the trailers or what the advertising for this was. They didn't show. This, I, can, this I can't was imagine the they ad would. That was in the TV guide and the sure, newspaper. Sure, sure, but I wonder if there was like a thirty pointing second. at the Blu-ray. I right. need that because I remember hearing this title as a kid and thinking it was like a Salem, Massachusetts, yeah. like yeah. which set story yeah, and then right. me finding out oh no it's actually about vampires like i need yeah. them to put my expectations in the right place with okay. the poster because so of did. the title yeah, yeah. but then you kind of you were expecting what the vampire would yeah like. but but I, every time the vampires are on screen i'm for it in this movie i enjoy it i yeah. just want more of it Can we talk like, about the yeah. look of the vampires in They're this because it's really good yeah i love this version up. of vampires mm-hmm. from the teeth the glowing eyes are mm-hmm. my favorite yeah this is how i want vampire eyes to look this freaks me out. really of all the vampire eyes love this yep. yeah i love the, there's just something the, primitive the, about this yeah look. just the yeah. glowing eyes you want me to tell you, you how they did it uh is it uh a uh, contacts with a special light that makes them glow it's the you know the stuff that they used on Close you remember the cat's eyes in the eyes. in the road? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's yeah. that reflected. Oh, oh that's they, cool. they the actor said they couldn't see a goddamn thing. Oh, fan. I bet they and could they hurt. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Those are seven, those are glass cool. contacts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge glass contacts is, they're putting under their eyes. Is there a reason some people's skin gets darker when they turn into a vampire? I, I was a little un- going for like wasn't a sure how yeah. Color. Yeah. Which it looks more blue in the light, but in the dark it just looks Black. I think it's just the deterioration of the of, of the skin because yeah. they are undead. The I mean, makeup job is just more obvious on some people right. than others. Yeah, but it depends on the lighting. Yeah. You remember, um, I think obviously when you die, you kind of take on like an ashen sheen. Right, the blood right, here. right. Uh, Eventually you just turn blue like mm-hmm. our yeah, main curtain here. F- I, I like this blue yes. for like, okay, Good I blue. can tell they're, yeah, it's better than... The Dawn of the Dead Blue. That's what right. I was gonna say. Zombie. It's not better than Zombie Blue. Yes. Yeah. But they were going for. Okay, I like this better than Zombie Blue. Tone yeah. To the Zombie. Yeah. Zombie Blue is a little too much sometimes, yeah. mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. But yes. But yeah, just a good look for the vampires. Mm-hmm. And again, just the two curved teeth in there. Just dirty. I like dirty front teeth. fangs. I like when it's the front teeth versus more like the canines. I, I like it better though. Oh, you like yeah. it up front? Yeah, well, but it is in this one. Barlow Barlow's got it up yeah. front. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else has yeah. kind of got them curved yeah. into the side. Either yeah. way, everyone's mouth looks fucking right. terrifying in this. Yeah. Just it's a mean good look. vampires. You know good the look. one I've always uh, kind of, I don't know, I mean, I do like this one because it's, it. I guess the whole thing with vampires, uh, at least these classic ones, right, from this era when they were able to do contact lenses and mm-hmm. stuff, it's always something that's drawing you to look at the eyes because yeah. they are supposed to be hypnotic. Yep. Right. So you're definitely looking at these characters' eyes because yep. they're, you know, now they use CGI glowing, mm-hmm. you know. But I did like um, Queen of the Damned. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were like cat's eyes. Mm-hmm. They only caught the light in certain, you Ooh, know, I like that. they'd be in the dark. Like they'd be sitting there talking to you and they look fine. But when they go in the dark and Ooh. they catch the light just right, there was that, yeah, you know, how like, cat's eyes yeah. You know looked. how in pitch black uh, yeah, hit, Vin Diesel's the, eyes look? Yeah. It's like that. Right. Yeah. And my greatest compliment to the Wolfman is, yeah. is that one scene with Anthony Hopkins where he backs away in the jail in the cell eyes. in the dark and the only yeah, thing there is his it. eyes glowing. That's, yeah. like, yeah. that's what gets me. I'm just yeah. like, that means yeah. evil to me. It's like, ooh. Especially because it taps into like our primal like um 
kind of instincts of like always be looking for the predator and it's yeah. like that's the dead giveaway is the front facing glowing eyes like that's like yeah. we are being stalked as prey right yeah. now yeah yeah yes. i mean yeah mm-hmm. always creepy mm-hmm. yeah it's a it's a good look for for vampires yes mm-hmm. um it does take them a while to show up like you're talking about like yeah. that shock mm-hmm. moment with um uh because the first one's the kid yeah oh the yeah yeah the, the kid first shows up at the, right. Yeah. yeah right yeah yeah at he shows window. up at the window mm-hmm. um and then they the, and uh, then the they effect's so good they do it again. They do right. it again. The second one he actually comes in and bites the kid on the, right. on the neck. Cool. I think it is cool, and I like how they find the kid that morning. Just, right, just <laughs> his head cocked to the side in right. such an unnatural way. It's just like ah, oh. right. because yeah. and they cut right to it, and yeah. it's disturbing to just be like ugh, the kid's dead. It's yeah. a bold nurse. punch with the kids. I appreciate that. I yeah. know. Yeah, kill the fucking kids. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. Everyone's everyone is up for grabs. Yeah, if you want to show us you mean be. business, yeah, take them out. Yeah. Get out. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess the, the the movie does dedicate a lot to the uh, the develop the blossoming love story. Mm-hmm. Um, James Mason is in this movie. Yep, yeah, Straker, and he yes. is great. He's, I mean, he's just with that James Mason voice, mm-hmm. he, like he's doing so much uh, good work. There are scenes between him and you. Actually, pointed one of them out. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite scenes. In this movie, dialogue wise, they're like they're like verbatim from the book. Oh yeah, because that's when you know you got like a good scene. Yeah, every version of it <laughs> does that scene and copies the the di- the lines verbatim. But it was between um, James Mason Straker and the sheriff. Mm-hmm. There's uh. there's two scenes. Oh yeah, where they're telling. <laughs> yeah, we're just like what well, this makes no sense. This is yeah. well, it's two it's two characters. Who like know something's up and are just circling each other yeah. verbally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're just kind of going back and forth. It's like, oh, I didn't think of that. And just, just mm. their spar. They're, they're, it's weird sparring because not a lot of it makes sense. But they're going back and forth with each other, and it's very fun. Yeah, it's like, how do I get him that to James give Mason, me? <laughs> and it's just like, I, 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 I've told you, there's nothing going on here, and just leave, sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I think, what he wants. That's not what he's saying, though. No. He is very polite. But, I mean, very there's polite. always that kind of menace to everything that he does. Yeah. Because um, he knows what's going on, does James Mason. And, I mean, I guess they, well, I don't know. The the, the movie, you know that he's the bad guy. So he's yeah. seen, like, with the corpse of the, I don't think, the, actually, I don't think the kid's dead. I think he brings the first kid he is the one who attacks right. the first kid, right? Because uh, right. Marlo is being shipped in in this like cold, you know, shipping container from yeah. the dock. Unnaturally cold shipping container. And Ma- James Mason actually attacks, I think, the first kid. The Glick kid? Yeah. Or, uh, is that what they're called? So yeah. the I do Glick have brothers. a question. Yes. Uh, he gives explicit instructions to the shipping guys that are never, that's never followed, but it's yep. basically Lock put the doors. thing in the basement. I'm not going to be here because I'm going to mm-hmm. be out. Uh, abducting a child. So, <laughs> yes. cover story as I'm driving to Boston, but I got to get food for the for this thing. Kidnapping a small when he's child. Talking about it, it seems like he's scared of this thing that he's bringing in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so he's like, put it in the basement. He right? knows its power, and he doesn't want it to get out. Is what I'm uh, like. He wants to have some control over it. So he's like, padlock all the doors. Leave the keys inside. Padlock all the doors. I'm going to be out. So who? Can actually unlock the house. Right. He's, yeah, he's like, <laughs> lock them all. But before you lock them, put all the keys in the basement. Yeah. So it's like, how? Okay. And then lock it in. Yes. Like, they don't. And so that's why Larry Crockett is attacked because yes. Barlow busts out of the thing. He explodes out of it, apparently, based yeah. on the way this crate looks as they go mm-hmm. down there. He's not. He's not scared of it though. He he knows the power of it and what it can do, but he's not scared of it because when he goes down in the basement, he sees it and it's more of a curiosity. Like, all right, he got out. Now we should go find him and see what's going on and yeah. help him out. But he's not scared of it. Not like he's been doing this ben for a while. Foster in uh, Thirty Days of Night. You're right. Uh, oh, you know. Boy, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. It was a chore. Yeah, I don't like that movie. <laughs> These guys have been living the life for uh, hundreds of years, yeah. I guess, uh, going across Europe and moving into little towns and yep. and taking them over. Yep. And now they're finally in in the modern day. So. With a rash of people just dropping dead, yeah. uh, there becomes the the vampire hunters coalesce. The people who are in on it know that it's going on. And so we have the writer, Ben Mears, 
right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, who I guess is able to make this leap because he believes that the house is evil. Yeah. So vampires, sure, I'm I'm in on it. Yeah, why not? Um, then he's slowly uh, uh, convincing people and or they are seeing what is happening. Yeah, there's a Susan with and a doctor um, and a bunch of other people. Well, Susan like never sees anything, but she's I mean the two guys in her life her boyfriend and her dad yeah. are like convinced by that point but i think the progression works from ben to um uh, james uh burke mm-hmm. right the, yes, the school the teacher. teacher um the drama teacher who yeah. i guess instructed him when he was a, 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 a english mm-hmm. major back yeah, in a the young kid. Yeah. yeah um so he has a an encounter with it's jeffrey lewis as the gravedigger who mm-hmm. like uh, yeah that was another, like, I actually, I remember jumping at that scene in the restaurant. It's a good one. Uh, where he, Which like, one? crashes into the table. It was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, he, like, Hooper is accentuating these, like, loud jump scare yep. moments throughout Definitely. the movie. Um, but there's this encounter in the uh, uh, Burke's house, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or is the, you know, the, look at me, yeah. teacher. Which is also kind of creepy, but I guess we've seen it it's, before. It's with creepy. The... It's almost comical, just because he's doing that tongue thing. Like, yeah, yeah, they all hiss. They do hiss. We ever established mm-hmm. why vampires hiss? Just because? Why would? Yeah, why would they? Because it's like a cat hiss, or something we're psychologically programmed a, a predator know. thing. Um, and uh, I was wondering during the movie why uh, vampires always retreat from uh, crucifixes. Oh this yeah, is, we're trying to figure out. It's it's the energy. It's the it's the energy of Christ, Colin. But the rules that are would scare anybody fast and loose in this movie with it because apparently taping two popsicle sticks together counts as a crucifix. Yeah, so. you always wonder and uh, what what because you brought it up during the thing. It's like if you could do two popsicle sticks together, can you just put your fingers together and make right. a crucifix? Yeah, do, do the, <laughs> does that does count? It, but does it does there have to be an end to the edges of right. a crucifix? Or right. Otherwise, is it just an X? Like right. you wonder what. All right, we should have something that is that can basically work. Mm-hmm. You know, the most basic of a crucifix. I don't know if popsicle sticks are going to do it for me. No, even though no. it does burn the head of a vampire. Burns, yeah. Yeah. If you touch them, they burn. Yeah. So it's hot. It's hot to them because it's, it's holy. A, you have to. But have I like the faith, think, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, although that doesn't work apparently later on. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the priest has his crucifix bent by the he does, king vampire. But he's a, is he a more powerful vampire? Does he? Does the priest not have enough faith? At this point, <laughs> I thought they point. said a line about something like that won't work with the the head vampire or whatever. They made I thought there was like a throwaway. Like, 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 test yeah. your faith against the master, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your faith against his face is what yeah. he's like. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm yeah. fair enough. That's a scary right. face. I remember a scene in the book where like the the priest does survive. He's I don't know that he gets turned into a vampire, but he's somehow like cursed by the blood of the vampire mm. and like he tries to go back to his church and he, he can't, can't get uh, you know he can't get in the door anymore that's a that's a like a a, a one-shot comic somewhere yeah uh, right i like the have we see yeah i like the idea of a priest being turned in uh, being a vampire turned into a vampire and it can no longer do his thing and everything have we done that before have we done that i don't know uh there's a like a there's a um a korean movie um yeah, well, it's about a priest who the guy from um, is it the guy from Old Boy? Oh yeah, really? I want to say it's from the director of Old Boy. Is it Thirst? It's called Thirst. Thirst. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. it's about a priest who that? turns yeah. into a vampire, right? Uh, I yeah. think so. I've just seen the poster. I, don't I saw think the I've movie, seen. but okay. yeah. Yeah, it was a while ago. All right, we'll do some digging. Isn't there like some horny sex stuff yes. in that movie? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. Good. <laughs> the poster implies that. So. Oh, the poster yeah. implies horny sex stuff. Yeah, it yep. does. interesting poster. Yep. Um. <laughs> so isn't and, there some horny sex stuff that, in that? That, I didn't it, there's like a woman that's like clearly being like fucked on the poster so that's why I don't okay. know how else to gotcha. say that <laughs> and I do remember the book had a scene where and I, I guess I was waiting for it in this I'd forgotten um, the scene where they, they finally do break into the Marston house and mm. the stairs are gone there is a yeah. character in the book who dies there because I think there's some spikes or antlers or something oh. and they're impaled I think okay. if I remember it correct, but now I'm like, I don't even remember which character it was right, because we, we impale someone else yeah. completely upstairs. So, um, but it, I, it does, um, you know, I think that's, you know, what we're angling towards, like when the vampire finally shows up and we see him and it's a shock. Yeah. Right. And then he starts showing up a little bit more yeah. and making his presence known. Yeah. The movie has window. waited 
so long, you know, to give you that. Yeah. Um, and also the house itself, because for a while there, I was thinking, I was like, they're talking about the Marston house and going inside the Marston house. And I'm like, well, we've been in the basement, mm-hmm. you know, but are we actually going to see this house? We do. It's it, gross. It's fucking gross. Bird set shit to, and feathers everywhere. Set design, like I said earlier, uh, very great. But again, yeah, bird feathers everywhere. Toby Hooper mm-hmm. loves just bird feathers. And everything and looks sticky. And- Everyone looks sticky. Everything looks like there's just a buildup of years of. Uh, it, it felt like at a certain point, a lot of birds lived in this house and just shit everywhere. Yep. And then, like, it, that just kind of like stayed there and then dust formed over it. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. yeah everything's like, dusty if you touched a railing, there'd be a lot. There'd be a. Oh, one of the characters does at one point. We're all like, oh, uh, God, don't yeah. touch that. It's like, yeah. don't, don't touch anything in this house. Yeah. Ooh. It is a weird because um, I thought a lot like about Fright Night uh, during this. I thought a lot about climax. Fright Night during this because yeah. uh, Fright Night lifted, you know, so many quite, things quite it felt like from this from, yes. from Salem's Lot. Yes, if nothing, and also the rolling fog mm-hmm. like, <laughs> made its way to Fright Night from this. Yeah, I mean, well, like we saw, fog I machines think 80, uh, absent Night. in our new Salem's Lot trailer. CGI fog, all CGI so fog. fog, which missed. Just, that Just has to cost that. more than a fog machine, right? Fog machines are so fucking cheap. You can go to par- Party City and buy one for like 25 I think, bucks. I think because it looks like, because it all looks like it's shot on a set or a stage yeah. somewhere, it's easier to control it, I guess, yeah. for the shots they oh, want. Yeah. I don't, right. Because yeah, fog, you know, depending on the wind. But if indoors, it's like, easier to control I, fog I, than it is. I, I don't yeah, understand. I can't explain <laughs> their, yeah. why they yeah. want to keep using CGI right. fog because it looks like Maybe it is a real fog in an indoor set. Maybe a little bit, but that is, you can tell it's all filled in around it. Yeah. It's it's blank. It has no character. It's just I could sit here and complain about that trailer all day. But yeah, ugh. but the house in this they do hold off for quite a while before we see it, and then the uh, third act does take place within it. I always this cavernous and there's house. this idea, you know, um, because I was like, does Straker actually sleep here? Like he presents himself as a cultured man of the world. Sure. If nothing else, that he's British. And then you're like, but once you get inside his house, you're like, does this guy like do anything? Like, does he cook and clean? Does he eat food? What is there a mm. kitchen in this dungeon hellhole? You wonder what he is. <laughs> well, yeah, especially because what are the rules on the Renfields? As far right. as their powers and if they can live and die. Because, again, I was thinking of Fright Night, another character who gets shot and then eventually just melts on the stairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, what? what is this power that they have? They are, are they, what are they promised by the vampire in which they do these things? Uh, and and the upkeep, the upkeep yeah. of, of keeping a vampire right. uh, well, roaming the around the countryside. That, that tries to address that is uh, let the right one that, in. Yeah. Right, you know, yeah. Yes. From the... the uh, the Renfield, yeah, which seems like and a get, bleak existence according yeah. to that it, movie. Very Fuck, bleak, yeah. even if it wasn't that, even if not right. that movie, it does seem very bleak. Although they get acid face yeah. in that one, which yeah. is just like, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah. Oh, in the remake, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Wait, did they do that? In they the did the first they did one. In the original. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. movie's I don't think just they, one oh. of them. They showed the pouring on. Yeah, where they did, I think that's a remake. Yeah, I think so too. But woo. Um, Maybe I have to go back and watch those. I, see, I feel like I'm good on those. Like I, I, got, mean, I got it. You no, know? Like, no, yeah. you're very right. Yeah. But just, ooh, yeah, just that bleak. Matt Reeves one is good though. Yeah, Better I like than them it both. has any right to be. Yeah. I did appreciate the part where the, the they got in the car accident and spun around, and that did the yeah. time jump back in time and kind of nonlinear yeah. storytelling. I thought that was creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a yeah, yeah it was good. a very good remake. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the end, they're able to uh, they they defeat the vampire well, old they, fashioned they, way. Right, they got to go find Steaks. him, and so he's in the root cellar. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, a root cellar is that where you just dried roots to save for later? Is that why it was called? Yeah, root I guess so. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Our modern houses don't have these. Yeah. No, not at all. You know, but there was also like uh, some houses that had like the cistern. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, where you could get water because I think yep. that's yeah. the Amityville, like the mm-hmm. uh, the hole to nowhere or whatever, the portal to hell. And it in does it basement. have one in the in one. One basements, I thought. I Maybe. have been in houses yeah. that have those. Because yeah, like right. he was afraid of it, right? And right. go down to the basement because yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Or at least in the new one, it did. Yeah, in the yeah, new one, yeah. it did. But they do find they do, cellars and cisterns yeah. in your basement. <laughs> but they do find where uh, um, um, Barlow is uh, uh, laying at rest. Uh, his coffin's in the root cellar, surrounded by bodies, mm-hmm. as it were. And so they have to drag him out because, you know, the sun's going down and everything. 
um, to to defeat him. Or I like. Why do you wait until the fucking last? Why do you wait till the last fucking minute? Like yeah, all again, goddamn day. This is the complaint I had last week with bats. I'm mm-hmm. just like, we have daylight all day. Yeah, right. We the hours of it, mm-hmm. and we're waiting till the last minute to figure this shit out. But yeah, so the sun goes down, and they have to open the coffin and 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 try and stab him through the heart. I I like this part uh, where um, what's the Mark is the young kid's name? Yeah, we we're, haven't we're, talked about him. No, we haven't talked the about the other him at all. character. Yeah, no, uh, he's the one who's like he's the other the younger st- side of Stephen King. Yeah, right. We have Ben Mears is the older the yes. writer, right. but then the kid who's interested in horror, he's yeah. like Tommy in Friday the Thirteenth. He is. Yeah, he's, he's got masks. He's got posters. He's got yeah, action cool figures. Yeah. Like yeah, and the kids make fun. Fuck these kids. Fuck the, his friends who. Just like this is kind of weird, man. It's just like, nah. It's you don't come into my house, see my awesome room, and tell me this shit's weird. Yeah, like, fuck off. Come in my house and disrespect me. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, get out of here. Like, I know we're gonna practice our lines and everything. He's a very uh, cool customer. This kid. Yeah, that kid's bedroom was probably bigger than that other kid's whole house. Like this Again, bedroom yeah. was also like, oh, cavernous. Like, attic- <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like the sets are huge. Yeah, in this huge. Movie. But uh, uh, there is where he, he gets uh, he gets pushed around a lot. Yeah, he does. Uh, Poor oh, kid. Very forcefully yeah. by um um. Ben Mears. Ben yeah. Mears and everything. But as he's watching, as he gets pushed to the ground, he's watching Ben Mears st- st- uh, stab and then hammer the stake into Barlow. Like, I like that the bodies that were in the root cellar are coming yeah. back to life yeah. behind yeah, him he, and he, slowly cool. crawling their way. I love it's that. It's like another, because he does that psycho lighting thing. Like, you know, the, the Ben, when he's going to, he raises the stake and he hits that hanging lamp. Yeah. yeah. So it'll swing back and forth. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then in the shot of the kid in front of the root cellar, mm-hmm. it just, it shows that they're there. Then, and then the back. light swings and then, away. Yep. It was effective. You see like how the clothing comes towards it. And then you see the, uh, the, the slight glow of the eye. Yeah. Coming yeah. Towards him. It's one off. of those things where, uh, you know, it's like there's certain filmmakers that just, they know what is frightening yes you know they know what's scary yep. and toby hooper knew what that was yep mm-hmm. you know it's like in this movie you can tell like he knows like how to make a horror movie he does you know i wish he got to do it for more of the runtime of this because i i don't know because we get a lot of uh, more in the back end yeah i would yep. say there's a lot of setup getting into this a lot of lot. drama leading up to yeah this. a lot of drama yeah. leading up to it. i don't uh, dislike it but no i was compelled by it no, but... yeah i was too um but uh yeah i wish there had been again when we spend so much time on the affair stuff i wish mm. maybe which just something... exits the movie yeah. entirely i wish what something was the more point? Yeah. productive had come from that mm-hmm. maybe you know a death or you know a little more murder mm-hmm. uh, earlier on in the movie mm-hmm. kind of to set up the badness of mm-hmm. kind of maybe the whole town mm-hmm. and all that stuff just maybe a little more of a punch in the beginning part you know, but, uh, like, I, uh, but I think for 1979, they were giving it and they were getting it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, part of that, like, you know, you're saying about the, you know, uh, the badness in the town. It's like the, the portrayal of the town sheriff is usually mm-hmm. in movies. The one where you go like he's the overbearing sheriff who, you know, and this one shows a sheriff who is like he's nosy yep. because he's staying on top of everything so he knows everything that's going on he's like a wily sheriff you know yeah i kind of like uh, no that i like the sheriff i like him. he's the one who's like i'm out yeah, yeah I'm i wish he i kind of wish he'd stuck around or <laughs> right. there was more with him in he's, this. No, he's got too much sense he's like yeah. he does well, <laughs> so i'm glad you know someone like he that character got out right. i just liked him and i wish he'd stuck around a little more mm-hmm. and for some more I wish there had been more murder and maybe investigations earlier on yeah. in the movie to use that character because I liked him so much. He was so good. But yeah, you're right. He's the only one who's got sense. He's like, I'm gone. I'm yeah. packing up my family. I'm leaving. And I think David Soul and uh, the doctor, um, mm-hmm. uh, Susan's dad, obviously they have... I think they have heroic qualities because they're like, you know, we have to flush out this evil. We have to stop it. But yeah. Most of these movies, Dracula included, kind of give you this, like, you know, well, you got the boyfriend and the father. Of course, they're going to go in there because the girl's in there. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have to get her, you know, and get her out. So it's not entirely you know, like we just have to kill the evil. We also have to rescue. Right. We have to save uh, yeah. Susan. Again, Fright Night. Uh, another yeah. Another example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't. <laughs> they don't. I was very surprised. Yeah. They don't. It's like, Susan, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. As yeah. he sets the house on fire. Like, she, yeah. Uh, up, to, uh, up to this point, like she's gone. We're like, yeah. we don't know where she went. She came to meet the man she came here to meet. Yep. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so then, yeah, then there's this like ending uh, where she does show up again as a vampire. So I, I don't know if that was in the, uh, I can't remember if that was in the yeah, novel. Yeah, in the book, but she does end up showing up. This is the part I remember because I think I remember watching this 
um, very early on. Um, my parents always loved this movie. They said it was one of the scariest things I'd ever watched because they watched it when it happened, when it was on TV and everything. So I think I, one night when they were watching it, I think I caught the back end of this. So I remember that ending scene with Bonnie mm. Bedelia and, mm-hmm. the, and the death and everything. But oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was followed by a theatrical uh, sequel. Oh, no. Okay, so the sequel went theatrical. The Return sequel, to Salem's Lot. Return to Salem's Lot, was written and directed by Larry Cohen. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And Michael Moriarty, Mor- Moriarty his star, is in it. <laughs> Um, I have not seen the entire thing. I've seen enough of it to hate it. It is a <laughs> comedy about oh, no. um vampires living in Salem's Lot, trying to adjust to mainstream, oh, no. and trying to yeah, you know, oh, trying to no. form their own community and basically mainstream. Sounds it's, horrible. It's horrible. You probably want to watch it real bad. And the just makeup's to see how bad. It it's not scary. I mean, it's just. I thought it was uh, yeah. Um, Stephen King, um, there was a prequel. Okay. Kind of. There's a story that he wrote. It shows up in Night Shift. It's called Jerusalem's Lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you maybe there's vampires. Somebody calls them Nosferatu. So maybe it was adapted into a television show starring Adrian Brody called Chapel Wait. Okay. Oh, wow. I know that one. That is based on Jerusalem's Lot. But I mean, it's. I guess, you know, if you're talking about 1700s, maybe <laughs> this place becomes the future because uh, Jerusalem's uh, lot's like a it's like a cursed Puritan village. Sure. That okay. the this uh, guy finds in like the in the 1700s, he goes over there and finds it. And there's, I think, Lovecraftian influences a of giant course. worm and the. Uh, the course. evil book and all this other stuff. A fucking giant worm. So I don't even know if that's considered like the origin of the evil that lives in the in the town. And then there's a sequel. Uh, he wrote a story. Is that also in Night Shift? It's called One for the Road, okay. and um, that takes place after the events of Salem's Lot. And it's basically during a blizzard. There's a uh, guy comes into a bar where these guys hang out, and it's like my car broke down. And they're like, where? It's like over in this town called Salem's Light or whatever. Oh so they go out to rescue like the guy's wife and daughter mm-hmm. are in the car. And they, of course, know that like you don't go over there. So uh, there is a sequel. It's a, Interesting. a short story. And uh, Reggie yep. Bannister is actually <laughs> oh, in. I love it. Uh, I think a sh- there's a short film out there somewhere. If you can track it down, okay. an adaptation of One for the Road. I'm so down for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so there it is. That's Salem's Lot. We finally watched it. Three hours worth. Yep, we did it. And we did the podcast in less of that time. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, saying, uh, we better not go on. This <laughs> yeah. is a man of steel, all right? Yeah, yeah. We're not sitting here for three plus hours. I mean, we glossed over a lot of the plot, but we're assuming at this point that you have seen it. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you, if you, if you haven't, yeah. whether you should watch it or not. Mm-hmm. But first, first. We're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. His eyes are glowing. I was gonna oh. say, you think he's ever been to anywhere in Maine where all this fuckery goes on? Probably. Yeah. I think he takes an annual sojourn. Yeah. To Maine because there's ground. so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he visits. Yeah. He knows Stephen King. Yeah. And he goes up and visits him and does a little tour and everything. Mm-hmm. Right? You are. I want to say, wasn't there a show yes. called Castle Rock? There was. Yeah, there was. I've heard it's really good. I believe Salem's Lot. Maybe shows up I think it does. in there. Like Bill Skarsgård is in that show for many seasons. I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I watched the first couple episodes yeah. of. And there's a there's yeah. a gender flip Jack Torrance, a Jackie Torrance uh, in there at some point. Jane Levy's in it at yep. some point. Yeah, yep. all the all the our horror icons of modern yeah, day. Are basically, in it, basically, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, they all and it incorporates it. little elements yep. from like mm-hmm. of the Stephen Kingiverse. It does because Sissy Spacek's in it too. Yep. As a different mm-hmm. character, but she's yeah. in it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Christine's in it. No, I don't know. I hope so. Okay. Uh, Didn't I wait. Seen what, it. Uh, well, probably. <laughs> sure. yeah. All she got to do is drive past. Didn't yeah. we do an updated, um, um, no, with James Kahn and Kathy Bates? Uh, Misery? Misery? Did we do an updated? She wasn't, uh, Castle Rock season two oh, was really? that character. Okay. Oh, okay. season two was the Kathy Bates character played by what's her name from Cloverfield? Um, 
And oh, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. She kind of resembles Kathy Bates. Yeah, a little. Like, uh, yeah, Kathy Bates. Yeah, I can't uh, remember her name. She's I know also who you're in talking Kinsey. about. She or the sex yep. show on Showtime. Fuck, I forgot her name. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they redid that. It was season two. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Did. Um, well, we should let the good folks at home while uh, Captain Google is on the case and finding out the actress's name that we have. Uh, Lizzie Kaplan. Lizzie Thank Kaplan, Kaplan of course. Okay. God damn it, it was on the tip She's of my great. Tongue. I love Lizzie Kaplan. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. she plays that character. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, Annie Wilkes. Yeah, Annie Wilkes. Yes. Um, so we should let the good folks at home know how they can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Free Show. Or on X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Salem's Lot. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, What are you doing? This is generally regarded as a good movie. Shouldn't you be reviewing Return to Salem's Lot? Oh, well. <laughs> I love how uh, we, we have just become the bad movie podcast. It's like, no, no, no. This is too good for you guys. Do something worse. Well, generally, that's how I like to work. You go for yeah. the you don't go for the good ones, but uh, you make exceptions. Right. It's Halloween right. season in September. Yeah, I, oh yeah, yeah. Halloween We're season spooky. starts September first. Yeah. Uh, Steve Carney says I rented the three hour version of Salem's Lot from Blockbuster when I was really young, <laughs> and watching it during the day terrified me. The two open the window scenes still scare me, and the glowing yellow eyes are very creepy. I yep. think this would make a good double feature with Phantasm released mm-hmm. the same year. See that. I Ironically, you can double feature this with anything. It's three hour long long movie. movie. This is the double feature. However, during the movie, Sean, you made a comment about James Mason. Yes. Had a tall man vibe. He does. He has a tall man vibe to him, especially when he lifts a dude up by his shoulders. Like he has, you know, he's got that super strength that Renfields have. Yeah. But yes, he got uh, got that uh, tall man vibe from him, even though he's a short fella, I believe. Although I want to say this came out the same year as uh-huh. Phantasm, so there couldn't have been any shared. What a shared... great time for horror. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robin Linneman Silverberg says, I was and am such a Stephen King fan that my parents got me my own 13 inch black and white TV so I could watch this in my bedroom when Aww. it first aired. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Just for you. Yeah. Richard Kratzer says the look at me teacher scene ruined my childhood. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, yeah. The effects for this particular scene hold up. Yep. Travis Legler says, I had a friend in third grade who had an older brother with a poster of the kid floating outside the window on his bedroom door facing the hallway. Oh, boy. He gave me chills as a kid every mm-hmm. time I walked past it. Yep. Then years later, I saw the movie and was creeped out by that scene. This is a good one as the Halloween season gets closer. Yep. Bell Tolls 1984 says, awesome. I love this movie. Roll Tide Zoe says, I remember seeing this on TV and being scared as hell. It did traumatize a whole generation. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mike Welch posted a photo of the Reb Brown Captain America and said it was a deep cut. And so I went on Indeed. a little bit of a keyboard <laughs> warrior journey and found out that, yes, Captain America 2, the movie that had Christopher Lee and yep. Reb Brown in it, yep. was the lead in to part two of Salem's Lot. When was it? it? First wow. Aired. That's right. So you went from Captain wow. America to Salem's Lot Part Two. What a time Rev- to be alive. Rev- 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 is back. Yeah, <laughs> he's always relevant. He's always, always relevant. Love it. Uh, Sobi Detura said, "What is each respective host's favorite Stephen King film adaptation, mm. and why?" Sean, uh, Sleepwalkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I that's mean, not an adaptation. It was original. Screenplay. original. I'm still gonna go with it. Uh, no, um, they haven't done it right yet. Um, what are all the adaptations? Uh, Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. I like Carrie. Good, good movie. I like Carrie. What a dream catcher. That's not your favorite. Uh, <laughs> I've been threatening that, to bring that, that for is, years, but it's also another three, three hours hour long. long yes, that's yeah, why I haven't brought shit it. Shit weasels and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think probably Carrie. Mm-hmm. Probably Carrie. That's- I, yeah, the first ca- the first Carrie. I'm gonna specify yep. specify yeah, because yeah, yeah. the Cl- Chloe Moretz one is not good. Um, but I mean. Man, his sleepwalkers, I was going to say. But <laughs> Dr. Sleep, that might be oh, a yeah. con- controversial take. Love that movie. Yeah. Love that movie. That movie hits me in an emotional way that other Stephen King stuff doesn't. So, I mean, The Shining, it, can you count The Shining? Because it's I not. Do. I mean, it is, but it's yeah. so different from yeah. the Yeah, but vision, it's but, an adaptation of it. Yeah. I, I would count but it's it. A, I, I mean, The Shining and Dr. Sleep, I think like that is the perfect. 
I mean, I can't, I can't, can you imagine doing a sequel to a movie like 40 years later of an iconic movie yeah. and you have to recreate like scenes from the iconic movie? Like it's, it was an undertaking and only Mike Flanagan could have pulled it off. So yeah. yeah. I didn't say Dr. Sleep. Oh, we'll see what he does with the exorcist. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, uphill battle. Yeah. yeah. The exorcist. The exorcist. Mm-hmm. Pet Cemetery is good too. I still yeah, like yeah, I would go Oh with, yeah. Pet, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Is good. Pet Cemetery I like, like that I know that there's problems with the movie. You can go back and listen to our podcast. Yeah. We did both the original mm-hmm. and the remake. Yeah. I really like Pet Cemetery. Mm-hmm. I like Salem's Lot. Mm-hmm. I like Carrie is, I think, by far of those, mm-hmm. the best movie and The Shining. I think so. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that, you know, before Dino De Laurentiis got into the Stephen right. King game. Yeah. Right. And we got Dino De Laurentiis movie. So like even Christine, yeah. I would count yes. as a I good one. Christine. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's um, a good yeah. one. But and then there's the Dino De Laurentiis era, yeah. Firestarter. Oh, you're and, not a fan of Secret Window? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 and Shawshank yeah. Redemption. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Green yeah. Mile. Yeah. I don't care for that as much. Yeah. yeah, I haven't read the, I don't, well, I, when they say adaptation, do we have to know what it is? Yeah, that was a, the, the those were material? like these thin novellas, I remember that right. he came out with. That was like an experiment in mm-hmm. uh, yeah. distribution of... I know uh, Travis Legler's. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maximum, Maximum Overdrive. Overdrive. Maximum uh, Overdrive. Uh, Machine, you call me an asshole. C- Cujo is not much of a movie. I don't know if you guys have rewatched that lately. There's not, Ooh, not much not, to not it. Recently. Not much to it. It's no, pretty but, thin. Yeah. The car, yeah. But it was... Uh, Bag of Bones was really bad. You remember that with Pierce Brosnan, that show? Yeah. That was really bad. Yeah. Storm um, of the Century is bad. Storm was, Century. Was Needful Ruth, Things? Need- I like some of it, but okay. it feels like an echo of Salem's Lot, and Salem's Lot's done so much better. Langoliers right. is bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, was 1408? Is that a I like thing? Yeah. I didn't. I've, I haven't seen 112263. There's a series on it. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, but I love that book, so yeah. I'm afraid well, to watch the show. No, it's, I, well... But, yeah, yeah right. I don't know how it, it mm-hmm. translates, but mm-hmm. it was okay as a show. Mm-hmm. Um, last week we watched a movie called Bats. <laughs> Bats. Sure did. Bats? Uh, bats. 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 Uh, Travis Legler says, it's from the director of Carnosaur 2. <laughs> yeah. You have to see it. The gore is better. It has a three point lighting. And it's basically a ripoff. <laughs> crossover of aliens and jurassic park i'm sh- sorry sean it will not like be, tremors will not be 3 seen. critters 2 jaws 3 and robocop 3 there are some movies you just can't give up on even if others <laughs> shit on them and you know you're a little curious i like the three-point okay. lighting is a selling point because well, right, we criticized <laughs> yeah, the original so like you yeah. didn't have it oh i'm always curious the oh, more yeah. professional carnosaur <laughs> michael whitaker says so i've heard about that luxury coffee that we talked about oh, on yeah. the, the bat, bat, shit the bat coffee. episode the bat shit coffee yeah he yeah. says what I heard was that it was really has nothing to do with passing through the animal system. The bat just manages to find the ripest coffee fruit to eat. Oh, so technically go. people are drinking poop coffee for no real reason. Ew, that, that makes it so much worse. I was hoping there was something special about the process. Okay, well that's even worse. No. Ew. Uh, no. I don't need to eat something that passed through. Well, 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 whatever we said last week, I will not be drinking coffee <laughs> from either a, a, a bat's anus or a cat's anus or whatever we said last week i won't be drinking that coffee and uh, the week before we watched a movie called eyes of fire which Mm -hmm. i think has had this is the one comment oh that we had on eyes of fire which i think is some kind of record because even movies that i was like no one has seen this we've had at least two or three people chime in yeah yeah because even wicked wicked now that was uh, (laughs) off the duo vision yeah Yeah. uh but this one we have the comment from simon carter who right. says that Will Hare, who is in Eyes of Fire, is definitely old man Peabody for me. Now, we had said mm-hmm. he is the actor who was in Back to the Future gotcha. as old yep. man Peabody uh, yep. and right. as the grandpa in Silent Night, mm-hmm. Deadly Night. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Simon Carter says he's old yeah. man Peabody yep. to him. Yep. Okay. He's Good. the grandpa in Silent mm-hmm. Night, Deadly Night mm-hmm. to yep. me. Yeah, that's what I remember <laughs> him from. Yeah. Uh, so thank you each of you for writing in. We really appreciate we it. We do indeed. Now we're going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Michaela. Yes. Uh, as if it could be anybody else. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's real shocker here. <laughs> what did you think about 1979's yeah. Salem's Lot? I mean, this was a long time coming. I've seen the poster design yep. and like the title card design and like is very iconic it's clearly like a uh, font generated specifically for this movie yes. um heard a lot of hype about it i remember a long i had to adjust my brain a long time ago till it's a vampire movie not like a witchcraft yes. movie um unfortunate name for this movie i i don't think it adds a ton 
Um, but there was a lot of pressure on this movie to deliver because it's been something I haven't seen, but I've seen like the famous imagery from for so yes. long. Um, I'm not seeing a reason for the three hour runtime. I'm going to be honest. I think that I'll, it's a drama for like the first 40 to 50 minutes of the movie and it takes too long to get going, but I do love every instance of vampires showing up yes. and I wish I had seen this as a kid cause it definitely would have traumatized me and I would love it. And it'd be one of my favorites because it traumatized me. Um, I, it's a bummer. We can't get a remake of this, right? I'm just going to assume this new one's bad because yep. there's no reason to assume otherwise so far. Yep. Um, I mean, Stephen King adaptations lately have been very bad. I, I, I fell on my sword and watched that Firestarter remake for you all. It yeah. was terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Pet Cemetery is bad. Have we yeah. seen a good Stephen King adaptation lately? I don't feel like we the have. It's sucked yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And I even like the still, first one. First but even still, that's a seven-year-old movie now, yeah. or something like that. Jesus, you know, yeah. so. Well, the um, thing in, in the remake of this, mm -hmm. the 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 trailer, right, mm -hmm. has the scene where Marjorie Glick sets sits up, and they had to do that thing with her voice. No, you know, it's like, like modulated it. Like, uh, uh, oh no, uh, it's like you can't. Like it's so cliche, right? <laughs> it's so right. cliche. Um, yeah, I just found myself kind of bored with it at times, and I don't think it earned the three-hour runtime. So I'm not going to recommend it. But I love that it traumatized an entire generation. I think movies yes. like that are culturally significant and we should hold them as such. Even if I didn't personally connect with it, I love its place in movie history and yes. cultural history. I'm glad it exists. I'm more curious about the book now, definitely, than I yes. have been. Um, and I, I really want to see a rock solid version of this. Mm. Yeah, I there could really be. want it. Um, but I'm not going to recommend it. Sean, what do you think? That's that's a pretty great review, I will say. Um, uh, I think I'm going to, just because we keep getting more of these, uh, mm -hmm. because this is a remake of 2004, we got another one coming out. Uh, I'm going to recommend it because, uh, again, the instances of vampirism are very good in this movie. I, I like them. They really freak me out. I think they're um, uh, portrayed very well. Um, I'm going to recommend it just because, like, out of all the ones that are coming out, you should see this one. Um, it does not earn its three hour runtime. I mean, I, I know it was a they it was a mini series in nineteen seventy nine, so it's gonna be a three hour um, you know, uh a runtime and all that stuff. If you know, uh I'm curious about what that two hour version was that you, you found, but that will never be seen again. But there is um there there's a lot to like about this. Um I like kind of all the actors that are in this. I think everyone's very convincing, everyone's very uh fun or menacing when they need to be. Um, it is just a drama for a long time and then we get into vampire stuff, but, uh, yeah. And I may have drifted away, uh, uh, a time or two during the middle of this when, you know, cause again, the length, um, but I still think there's, um, a good amount here that you should visit, uh, cause it's Salem's lot, like, mm -hmm. you know, and that, uh, design, uh, whether being stolen from Nostratu or not, uh, still, Still very good, very solid. Scared again when he first shows up, scared me. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a jump scare, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of good in this movie um, that I st you should see. So uh, yeah, original Salem's Lot. I'm gonna recommend it. Uh, yeah, it's still a good time. Just a lot of creepy stuff in this um, that I think you'll enjoy. So I'm um, for it. Colin, take I mean, us home. It's interesting to hear your perspectives on it because I guess my you know thoughts on it are tempered by nostalgia i think it's great uh but that's because you know i'm um, i'm used to the pacing i saw it when i was younger i think it's the scariest tv movie that i've ever seen uh because it actually made me jump and yep. it's creepy uh toby hooper as a director on this i thought was like really good the actors are good, good. Directing. his good directing. the shots are good the direction's like really good yeah um there's no dialogue that I that I went. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. like it's yeah. written. I guess well. that's the thing. Like, yeah, I thought it was written well. Like the and he knows. Like he gets out of scenes. Like you know, like yeah. on a line, boom, we're out on a line, boom. So I guess yeah, the the pacing didn't bother me. I was absorbed by like the characters and what was going on. I realize that when you're trying to shoehorn like any of these big multi character novels, uh to compress them you have to eliminate stuff and you know the, you choose things to focus on um and once the so it, it like sets up the town it feels like for the first like hour and a half and then the second hour and a half is like okay now there's vampires and everything's falling apart yes you know um and the vampire effects like we said are, are creepy um 
I really enjoyed it. I think that's what it comes down to. I, I think this is one of the, it's also not only the scariest TV movie I think that I've ever seen, but it is also one of the best vampire stories. I like um, the analog, I guess, to Dracula, you know, mm. it does, it feels like the American, the American Dracula mm. <laughs> story, you know, and that it, uh, you know, I guess I don't know that it had a huge, like when you look at other movies, I know we've been picking a couple out, you know, Fright Night. Fright Night, we said, was like the, um, that was the last of the mm-hmm. classic, you know, it yeah. it's looking at the tropes of all the classic yeah. movies. So obviously I bor- borrowed from stuff like Salem's Lot, yep. but um, I think uh, I lost my train of thought. I don't know. I Enter- mean, it's entertaining. It's it's good. Yeah. I, I, I very enjoyed it so uh I, I i say you should watch it all right so that's salem's lot uh Finally. next week yes. done there you Checked go we have watched list. it and we will check out the uh remake i'm, I'm curious sure. yeah mm-hmm. i'm curious about it too i'll probably mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch it up to, uh, yeah i'll watch it to the point where it pisses me off yeah. and i'll just be out just like, we're gonna okay. have to all we'll like how... text each other while we're watching it be like what time <laughs> what time we got out yes yeah. yeah. what time we oh, all yes. dropped okay, out of it october 3rd maybe there's good stuff in it maybe we'll be we're willing i think we're willing to give it a shot yeah it's more the style i guess i'm sitting there going like okay you know it, it seems cliched conjuring yes. Yes. Stuff. Uh, yeah all right we'll yeah. see we'll give it a it's yep. day in court all right <laughs> next week uh we're watching a movie that's chosen by sean did you come to a decision you were struggling a bit earlier i did all right. uh i think what's what, what's better than uh we're, we're gonna bring back the lawnmower man just the character Okay. Uh, or the actor, anyway. We're going to, uh, Jeff Fahey will be making a return appearance to the show in Body Parts. Oh, right. All right. All right. All because right. it's Just been on the list, list for a while. while. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, like, yeah. what's better than a guy getting the parts of a serial <laughs> killer yeah. yes. grafted onto it. him? Yeah. And have what you, does have that have? What effect does that have on a man's psychology? So, this is the boys' version of May. Basically, right? May <laughs> yeah, is for sure. girls. Yeah, yeah. Body parts is for boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have, have either of you seen I this that before? I have not. No. I have not seen Body Parts no. before. No. Okay. All right. So that's Body Parts yes. next week mm-hmm. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.